Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits Podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits Podcast, episode 175, brought to you by Flips for Miles, Uncle All Out Amazon, as well. So today we have John Side Hustle Experiment back. You guys know and love him on Instagram. And we're going to talk about how to quit your nine to five to build a seven figure OA business as well as what John's Miami Sellers Conference presentation was on, which was how he lost 40 pounds, which is pretty cool. So we want to talk about how business is a great self-improvement vehicle and such. Um, good to have you back, John. You want to fill us in on a little bit of your backstory who people for people who might not be familiar? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, happy to be back. Always love coming on the show. Yeah, so basically I started... Uh, so my business got started flipping furniture, actually. So the first year I did the Gary Vee Flip Challenge and basically was buying like furniture tables, buying it on Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks, selling it for 250. I made like 25 grand in sales the first year and probably like 12 to 15K of that was profit. So that was kind of the start of like startup capital for me. So a Reezy resales video that you could thrift books, thought it was a total scam, uh, <laughs> did it anyway. I was like, there's just no way. Cause one of the first books I scanned, on the back of the book, it was actually the Salvation Army where we've been before. Yeah, we'll get into um, all that. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it said the book was $27.99, like brand new. And on Amazon, it was selling for like $42. I was like, this is like, something's wrong here. But I like bought like eight or six or eight books, sent them into Amazon. Sure enough, like two weeks later, they sell. And that one sold for $42. Got hooked. Just started thrifting, grinding. I had a nine to five. So it was basically nights and weekends. Every weekend I would go to like a new area in PA, Maryland, Baltimore, pretty much anywhere within like a three to four hour radius. Just hit up all the thrift stores. I kind of make a weekend out of it. Like me and my girlfriend would go. So like, it was like work during the day. Then like, you know, eat good food and stuff like that. Like on the business, since it's a business trip kind of stuff. Um, did that. And then was getting close to quitting my job at my nine to five, um, basically got into bulk books. So started buying Gaylords of books, did that out of a storage unit for about a year or so. It was so cold. It was terrible. It was either really cold or really hot in the storage unit. Um, and then eventually I was able to scale up, got a a 4,500, I think it was 4,500 square foot warehouse. I think there's a video on Miles' channel of we oh, did like yeah. a warehouse. Yeah, tour. yeah, I remember that video. Yeah, good times, man. Yeah, good times. Yeah. So I did that, got equipment, got employees, had a forklift, all that kind of stuff. And then kind of restock limits hit um, pretty hard. And I turned the whole FBA business into merch fulfilled. So I had to learn how to do that. And I was shipping out like between probably like 60 to 80 books every morning. And it was just brutal. Like, I know you guys could be big on like Merch of the Field. It's and a lot way of different though when it's into, yeah. when it's one skew, but it's way Exa different. I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like 75 cents or $2 per time. Yeah, you touch yeah. Product completely as opposed to different. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is not why I got into this business uh, to do this. And then I kind of, it was really the Miami sellers conference i think the first one where i really like i kind of knew like you guys were doing oa i kind of had some idea around it and started dabbling with it but it wasn't until i went to really miami the first one that it really all clicked for me and i met a bunch of people there and uh cody uh does amazon now he's cody does walmart he really helped me get started sourcing um and then yeah i just started slowly sourcing oa um was doing a lot of the prep myself since i had a warehouse and then I just got out of books completely. Just way too much work. Once I started the power of OA, basically ordering it and then getting a prep center, not having to touch the inventory. Um, and yeah, just kind of went through all the trials and tribulations, sold a ton of apparel at the beginning. Now I sell no apparel. Um, but yeah, now everything's OA to prep. And it's just a really great business model. Been able to do like two, $3 million since I kind of started the OA portion of it. And it's just been a great uh time since then yeah and that's the cool thing man was when you and i got started right like the the neat part is like no one talked about oa yeah no one 
right? There were some people doing retail arbitrage, but those were just people that had been around for a while that ungating was a thing for. It wasn't really a thing for us. Like, I remember your account had some stuff ungated back in the day in like 2019, right? Like, I think you had like yeah. one product when we first met. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, God. I had some stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it was crazy. Like the progression back in the day, it was like, you did books. If you crushed it, you might go into wholesale yep. or private label. Like that was the path. Like OA wasn't a thing or was not on my radar. Yeah. And then 2020 rolls around. Amazon's like, damn, man, the wholesale supply chain screwed up. All right, fuck it. Anyone can sell Nike as long as you do go through the process from the YouTube videos. Right. And then the info, info got democratized and such, which is beautiful. So how'd you really know that it was time to quit the job? Cause that's the goal of most people watching this. Like looking yeah. at the demographics for anyone wondering, we are 99.2% male audience, right? Yeah, and most sure. people <laughs> are between, I think it's 25 and 44, the main demographic. I think uh, it's even 34, males. 25 to 34, something think, like yeah, that. Yeah, something like yeah. that, right? So most people want to quit their job to do this. Like, how did you know that it was the right time? So for me, I looked at it two ways. So I basically for me, which a lot of people don't understand, it's kind of hard to get across. So I was pretty good at saving money and kind of just living, you know, a decent life, but not living this extravagant life. So I was able to save and build an emergency fund just based on my salary. So everything from Amazon just went back into the business. So for like two, three years, all I was doing is keep reinvesting the money and just compounding and compounding. And then by the time it was time to leave, it's like I had, I think it was like six months in the business account, like to buy inventory. And then another six to eight months kind of in an emergency fund. So basically like if everything went to shit and nothing worked out, I'd be fine for six to eight months. Um, and as you guys have it like a little different because like I didn't like Amazon wasn't really a thing for me when I was kind of like in college. Maybe it was, but not like it is today. Um, yeah. So like it was just like, oh, like you get a nine to five job. Like that's just how it was. And then you kind of work. That's how it was for me. I was probably like one of the last generations. Well, for to... most people, man, if you didn't get yeah. catch a luck, if you didn't get the Reezy resells, you know, yeah. YouTube, yeah. YouTube recommended, you know, which unfortunately most people don't, you know, <laughs> unfortunately. <Yeah. laughs> and it was just like for me, and I talked to Caleb Roth and I was like, hey, here's a spreadsheet of all my numbers. Here's what I'm currently doing. And he's like, damn, dude, like I talked to most people and they're like, yeah, I have like a thousand bucks saved up. He's like, dude, like you'll be fine. Um, so it was just kind of that validation. And it's like one of the biggest things I did, which I think I would recommend anyone doing, I wrote a list of like, if this goes wrong, what does my life look like? And really looked at that kind of stuff. like. You don't want to, but it's like, oh, I could always go move back in with a friend, parents, could always get another job. Like, I'm good at making content. Like, I could probably, I probably could have like pitched Caleb or someone to work for like Scout IQ. Like, there's just so much stuff I could have done. Well, you so, built yourself. Yeah, you, yeah. you very intelligently yeah. built yourself to give you those options, man. Exactly. So I was like, there's really no downside. And I mean, and I was at the point in my life, it's just like, whatever, you get another job. Like if this doesn't work out, which is or... if we're being honest, that's everyone's life. That yeah, is every, yeah. that is everyone's life. As long as you're capable, man, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, I just can't see the downside of this. And then as I was kind of like getting through going to the job, that's the thing that clicks too. It's like, you're making more on the side than you are at your job. And then you just have that time where your boss is just being like an asshole and you're just like, you know what? I don't need this anymore. So and what were you doing did... prior? I was a copywriter for a magazine, which is were crazy. you making like what were you making good money or not so much or I was making like probably 50k when I yeah. left. But so I, I mean, mean decent, but like nothing crazy. Yeah, and but 20 you, you 2019 that, money too. So you could honestly too. make 50, 60k serving at a restaurant full time. Oh, if you, yeah, if you for had sure. to among like so many other things, right? And Miles and I joke about a bunch of like, A, the conversion rate between like engineers that we know into successful Amazon sellers, but B, it's sort of like the, the blessing and a curse at like a high paying job. Oh, yeah. it's a major curse for a lot of because people. Because like, yeah, A, you know. your lifestyle accommodates, it has gotten to a certain point where it's like, oh, I have a lot more to replace. Yeah. You yeah, raise your sure. floor of kind of like your, the substance that you have to create. And it's just like way harder to replace. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's, a, it's a bigger, bigger jump, right? Because it's not, oh, I just need to replace three or 4,000. It's, oh, I need to replace eight to 9,000. And that's a lot more challenging of a thing, yeah. especially when this is a business that you shouldn't really expect success within the first couple of months, like that sort of success. 
And that was a really big thing for me because I always knew I wanted to work for myself. So I strategically took this job where it was like, it's going to pay decent, but my stress level is going to be so down. And I knew I was going to be able to build something on the side. So I purposely got a job that would like pay right around that salary. Cause I knew as soon as you go like kind of above that, like you have to manage people more is expected of you. And I was like, I want to build something on the side. I don't know what that is. So I kind of did it purposely. And knowing that as well, it's like, well, if you get used to making 80 to hundred K it's a lot harder to leave. Yeah, so that like good for like fifty yeah. to seventy range, fifty to sixty five. Mm. That's like the e. That's the sweet spot, right? Because yeah, it's like you're sure. living comfortably, but that's that that salary is so easy to replicate across so many different industries. Whether oh, it be yeah. serving, whether it be driving Uber, whether it be, I mean, any number of things, you can replicate that like pretty easy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's the cool part, right? Is you also learn to get by on not a lot right to where yeah. anything further than that becomes luxury you start to see what you're capable of on such right too and that one point you made about taking the less demanding job is wildly overlooked i think right sure. especially yeah. i actually see a lot of younger guys do it and such but like that is such a good point like optimizing the, sh the level of stress that you might like okay sure it's an extra 10 it's 10k less a year but it might be 75 percent less stress right, right where yeah. there's a big arbitrage in that right because for if sure. you get 75% less stress in your life and maybe 10 extra hours a week, what can you go ahead and create across a year, right? Yeah. Compounding wise doing Amazon and uh, stuff, right? Too, which is, you know, super, super powerful and such as well. So you get going, you basically do uh, the use books, which is the crazy part is a lot of people listening don't even really know what that is, which I would say yeah. is beautiful, <laughs> right? But it is also very nostalgic. I'm um, talking about it because that's where, you know, you and I got going. And then the cool part is you randomly one day, you see an Instagram story from a young guy yeah. named Plus for Miles. You're like, oh shit, is that the thrift store I go to? Turns out it is. You and I linked up <laughs> the next week, right? So we start hanging out. So talk about how the content and, uh, you know, just overall, that's been a really beneficial thing because I, you know, I totally know it has. You got the beautiful shirt on from the podcast too yeah. and such, man. So talk about, you know, content, the community and how that's benefited you. Yeah, man, it's the ultimate benefit. And it, it, it you have to use it in the right way. So when I first started doing it, it was more like, shit, like Miles is like taking all the books where I'm sitting here at work. Like, this is terrible. Like, cause I'm watching this at work. Yes, but yeah. like the initial reaction was kind of like, huh, like he's in my area. Like I should make friends with him. I didn't really know anyone in the area. And like, you don't know, like no one understands it. Like that was probably the no beautiful one, man, thing. No one. No, about going to Miami, everyone understands. Like, you don't have to explain. Like, well, it's just like, hey, this is where <laughs> I'm at in my business. Like, what do you do? Like, everyone just gets it. Um, so I was like, yeah, let's like connect and like we can help each other out. I know you were like kind of doing shoes and yeah. doing other stuff, and yeah, we ended up just like thrifting together. You kind of showed me like Plato's closet and kind of what you were up to, and yeah, you just have to, I mean. You just have to have an abundance mindset. There's just so much stuff out there. And I even knew like books in like our local area. It just really didn't matter. Like sometimes like having competition is good because on the other hand, like you're going to work harder. You'll probably scan more books. If you're like, hey, like someone else is in this area now. Like you got to be smarter and then you have to just build your business. But I just knew like meeting people in the space usually just leads to something else and then it's like someone you have i think for oa that is one of the coolest parts it's like almost you can get validation like if i'm like talking to you you'd be like yo have you been to the sally like there's been nothing there this week like i get that you're like uh like, you get shit yeah, solved quicker man you get stuff yeah solved. You get stuff solved yeah, yeah. boom 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 and then you're just like oh but i heard this other one's opening or there's one by me like try and you just like problem solve um and it just gives you like kind of that thing or it's just like yeah man i hit it hard so like i clean it out like there will be more books there so you just kind of i think for that like i send leads to people all the time or it's like hey like where do you think about this or it's like damn this looks way too good to be true like what am i missing here and then like sometimes they're like nothing other times they're like yeah it's like a two-pack or it's this or it's that but yeah just be able to network and then yeah just like having a phone with like pretty much all the big people in it or like if I ever did get into a problem like a solution is a text message away or a zoom away or a call away and that's worth more than anything oh to me it's anyway. crazy the amount of time you save man imagine how much money you save not buying mm. bad stuff or how much sure. extra money you make buying heavy on the stuff that you had introduced to 
yeah. and such, right? And the cool thing, man, is like, um, okay, so people might see like Warner and myself like making these really high produced videos, that whatever. Like that, that it didn't start that way. All you got to do, man, all you got to do is just document what you're doing. This is what I did today. This is what I did yesterday. This place had no books, or if you're doing away, I didn't yeah. find any leads today. And slowly but surely, people start catching on. They start to learn your story, right? They start to see what you got going on. Like I remember, you know, you and I hung out the first time. You were already doing, I was pretty sure you were already posting stuff right there, right? You yeah, know, I was yeah, just totally getting started. Yeah. 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 It was but like key, maybe two, three times a week. It wasn't like once I started doing it every day, that's kind of when up, it, like, but you got to start somewhere though, right? In that you and I had the mutual trust to hang yeah. out because you got to know me parasocially through my content. I got to know you parasocially through my yeah. content. And the upside of that is infinite. And the downside sure. of it is you might feel a little discouraged if someone says, dude, why the fuck are you making videos? Like your life yeah. doesn't change for the worst in that regard. But if we're being honest, that's why people don't do it, right? So just nicely start out. If you guys look up, go on YouTube and search Gary V document don't create. Like that, yeah, there's that one, sure. it's very viral. It's like eight years old. Watch that. That's like my entire thesis around that. Cause I know you're a big Gary V guy and that- Oh, oh I'm for sure. Inspiration there. And I love what like Hermosi has like an also like a spin on it where it's just like if you tell your story, you can never be wrong because it's your story. Yes. Like if you're like, hey, this is what I did today. Like, how could someone argue with that? Like, obviously, as long as you're not lying. So I kind of <laughs> like that. Like if you're just documenting and just telling what you're doing, like no one can really argue with you and say you're fake or doing whatever. Yeah. And people start to give you feedback. They start asking questions and such. Yeah. And then that further gives you further idea, you know, video ideas and such. And, you know. I see a ton of people that make no content saying, I don't know what to make videos about, but I see every single person who got started start to learn what people like. Or I don't have any, I don't know, I have, I don't have anything valuable to say. Oh, and you, you probably don't. And that's even more important why you need to show what you're doing. Right. Cause it, cause if you had a bunch of good connections, you wouldn't need to, you, you wouldn't be struggling. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of people too, like now it's at the point where I have a lot of inbound, um, And it's always, I always look at the profile, like I'm down to follow anyone, but if you don't make content, like I'm not following you. Like, even if it's just one video, like, oh, I'm getting started. Like I would be more prone to actually help that person than I would be to be like, oh, like next or whatever. Like Like if you saw someone that had a bunch of videos of them in a store scanning books or yeah. in the thrift store. Oh, I want to help that guy so bad. Especially if, in sure. 2024, if he's in the thrift store, I, I see it as my duty to help him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that, that's cool. And that's, that's the nice part is, man, you know, literally us three, we all just met, you know, posting online and such. And, and there's a bunch of people that have not done that, that unfortunately can't do software or, or it's going to be harder or can't do affiliate marketing yeah. or can't do consulting. Right. But you got to give yourself the chance to, by giving yourself the chance to get lucky by being out there, by being in the mix. Sure. Right. You know, and that, that just is the only thing that creates opportunity besides buying products essentially. Right. Cause it's going to be yeah, other people. For sure thrift store employees or retail arbitrage employees putting you on the boys from OA online, putting people on whatever discord, Facebook, et cetera. Right. I just can't state enough how important that stuff is um, as well. So, okay. Current OA business. So I am a huge proponent of selling clothing and stuff like that. Cause a lot of those big brands are some of the largest brands in arbitrage. So for beginners, it's really, really easy. One on gate unlocks 50,000 Nike frogs, for example. Cool thing is you do none of that, right? So describe kind of what goes into your OA business. How are you sourcing uh, virtual assistants, that kind of thing? Yeah, so for me right now, it's all me. I had a couple of VAs, but then I have a stuff down to like such a science at this point where I'm spending (laughs) maybe less than like two hours a day. I'm doing a lot of replenishing. Like it just doesn't make sense for me to kind of take one on right now. I'm also kind of doing like the Amazon influencer program now. So I'm like working that into the mix. But yeah, basically I was doing a lot of clothing, apparel, not so much shoes. Um, And for me, it was just kind of the returns. I was just, I mean, it depends on what you buy. Like you guys make a ton of money selling apparel like other people do. It just wasn't for me. I'm not really into it either. Like I couldn't tell you like what are the coolest sneakers. Like it just just didn't care. Um, so I think for me, that was kind of like, I wasn't really that into it. Like, I remember all this, like, listen to you, like on lives, but like the air force max, did this? I was like, what are these guys talking about? Like, I've never <laughs> heard of any of this stuff or not that like, I couldn't learn it, but like, I was just like, I'm just not into it. Um, and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to kind of take a huge pivot, you know, take a huge, like loss in sales 
and learn like pretty much a different category. I do a lot of beauty, a lot of health, um, some other stuff. But basically, yeah, now I kind of have that kind of down. And it's like once you learn a certain niche, um, maybe two or three, or get really good at sourcing, let's call it five to 10 stores, like you're good to go. And like, I think that is what a lot of people miss. Everyone's always like, oh, what are the good stores? What are the good stores? Like, it's not about what are the good stores. It's like, how well can you shop five or 10 stores? Like, how good are you shopping those stores? That's Like coupon codes, discounts. Like, that's what it's all about. It's that ease of purchase piece that's massive, 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 Mm -hmm. massive. Doesn't get talked about much uh, enough, right? Because it's like some people over here will spend hours trying to spend, trying to, trying to, Fit, what's yeah. the saying? Fit, fit a, a square peg into a circle hole or something. Yeah, right? so yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like that, yeah. trying to place an order on a site that just doesn't want it, right? Doesn't want your money, right? There was something to be said about like trying to fight through those cancels, but at a certain point, it's like, man, you got to be spending your time elsewhere. You got to be trying to source, trying to buy, trying to spend money, and trying to source products at sites that actually want your money, right? Whether that yeah, be, that's a big time a loophole, waster for a yeah, lot of people because like, oh, how can I not get canceled? Oh, I get canceled. Like, stop shopping there. Yeah, there's like, websites it's that not a mode. Red, like, man. yeah, that's oh, if I can get my order that. through, it's like they're gonna cancel it in like a month or two. Like, just get over it. Yeah, and you'll learn. Like, they, there's a, a lot of work that goes yeah, into yeah. aggregating this stuff and everything. And the cool part is, you know, okay, one site doesn't work. Who cares? There's another site, right? There's, you know, you should be working with other people doing this stuff, solving these problems, opportunities all over the place if you stick around long long enough to see it come to fruition and such. And that's well. another benefit of networking too, because like, hey, Garrett, Miles, like, why is it? They're like stop shopping there. Like they're going to cancel. Like we've been trying to do it for yeah. a year. So there now you just save yep. a bunch of time and all right, try there this other store and now you're on to the next one. But yeah. it's not only that, it's different ways to order different places, maybe a different order cadence, maybe yeah. a different Ooh, quantity, that's, right? There's that's a soft quantity. So right? underrated. Yeah. And it's right. like, we, it, it's, there's like 10 different combinations to get around cancels, like of shit you could do. Oh, right. Yeah. And it, it's literally like two X, five X or 10 X the work to do it on your own versus having a hell of a lot more fun doing it with the people you met on Instagram. Or whatever, and we get it. Like you know, it it sounds a little insensitive because it comes so natural to us to get on yeah. camera to post because it's a part of your day, though. But it wasn't always like that, you know. It was it wasn't yeah. always like that. But then you start seeing feedback, you get the ball runs just like selling Amazon. At the end of the day, too. Okay, so switching it up here. So, uh, your talk at Miami SARS conference was uh, about uh, fitness and how that's really positively influenced you, right? I could. I feel like I, I gained like 15 pounds the past like six months and like it changed. I had a huge milestone today. Yeah. So John, you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of what's gone into that and how that's benefited the business as well as just life in general. Yeah. So last year is about right after Miami. I was like, this is amazing. Like it was my first year speaking and I saw the pictures or some pictures of me speaking. I was like, damn, like you look terrible. I was like tired. Like I basically forfeited health to grow the business because I was like working nine to five. I hated, and I was like, you just can't do it all. Like sometimes like you just can't. And that I traded like a side hustle for fitness. Um, and I was able to work it out. And there was just one day I was just like, I'm just like so tired of this. Like, it was kind of like, I'm going to the gym, everything's going good. And then I stopped going to the gym to the hustle and this and that. And I was like, you know what? Like I once lost like close to hundred pounds, like five years ago. And like what I had was a trainer. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a trainer this time around. And I'm just going to do whatever the guy says. And that's what I did. I saw this guy, he's wearing a hoodie. And it was like, uh, it was like one day or day one. I was like, damn, that's a dope like kind of saying or whatever. So I took a picture of it, like a weirdo. And then I looked it up online and I was like, oh, he's local. So then I just like found his website and I was like, I'm going to go with this guy. So I love it. He basically like loads all these apps into all these workouts into an app, just follow it. And it's, it's exactly like building a business. Like (laughs) it sucks at first. It seems impossible. You hate it. It's just like, but having someone there being like, yo, like, come on like stick with this. Like I got you. Like, this is normal. I think a lot for a lot of people, they just want to hear that it's normal. Like, if you're like, oh, I can't find anything sourcing. It's like, oh, it's normal. Like, I went through the same thing. They're like, oh, okay. Like, I'll get through this. So I think having someone do that. But yeah, getting in shape, getting healthy in my business has, I've lost today was actually the 40 pound mark. And basically, I want to lose another probably maybe 30, 40 
don't know. The trainer says like, you'll, we'll see as kind of you progress, like what that number is for you. Um, but yeah, my business is up like 50% from last year. So all in all, it's been huge. And I think just having that mindset is just like, not even at the shape I am now, like I do not want to go to the gym every day, but go into the gym every day it, makes you like, Oh, when you don't want to file for like returns or you're like, well, like I just got to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to do it if we're being honest. Yeah. If you want to get, you want to get what you, you and it's sure. great for routine and shit too. That's a big thing for routine. It's, I feel like such a loser if I haven't worked out by like 2 PM. Well, the, yeah. the seventh wonder of the world is momentum, right? That's the, that's sure. the, the biggest power is because we, we can't physically have enough energy, mental discipline to want to do it every day. So we need help. Yeah. Everyone's like the same, everyone operates the same way, right? If you don't have boundaries, some days you're really not gonna wanna eat what you're supposed to eat, right? But the boundaries and the four or five months of eating clean, that is the power that gets you over the edge on that, on that off day. Or your trainer, right? When yeah. you worked out for five straight days, you had a long night sourcing, you woke up early, you don't want to train. You have someone else there to kind of push you in the right direction. Same with with me. I hired a trainer for my Ironman. He got me to the finish line, got me exactly where I needed to be. Awesome. Right? That momentum, the boundaries, the kind of like the the uh, the bumpers at the bowling alley, that's what helps, right? That's the the extra force needed to keep us in line when sometimes we just don't have the the willpower to do so. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's the most important part. And like kind of what got me through it is basically like that accountability. Like I know he's looking at the app. He could see my, my exactly. fitness pal. He could see like, oh, I didn't do a workout. Or I'd be like, hey, like you didn't log into the app yet. Like make sure you get your workout in. Or just like that random text, like, come on, like let's get after it today. And then it's like, oh, like I don't like you have these check-in calls. Like I don't want to go to the check-in call. Like, oh, I didn't do any workouts this week. You just feel like an idiot. It's um so much and so much goes back to I know we we always harp on it, but like the whole group atmosphere of Amazon. Yeah, that's oh, everything, it. man. Team it's, oh, yeah. it's the momentum of the group. Anything done, you yeah. don't you can't be the one to not put any effort in, to not source for a week straight, to not show up in the business, to not show up in the group. You can't be the weak link. So why? What does that force you to do? Yeah. To double down, triple down, even when you don't want to and, and get to work. Right? It's the momentum, it's the accountability that you were talking about. All those things we were talking about sports or training or eating or business they're all boiled down to two of the biggest common denominators in success it's accountability and momentum and just capturing both of them yeah, yeah for and the sure. cool part the cool part too with that is that or not the cool part the cool uh, amazon wise the cool part is you see the returns over the long term like your sixth month you get so much more out of an hour than you do yeah. an hour your first week and it's the same thing like working out like you start to look a lot better the longer you do it and that comes from someone who hasn't been doing it that long but i feel like i've been starting to look better right yeah. as well you know and that's the cool part right is it all plays hand in hand man like i feel bad if i don't work out i'll feel terrible if i don't work on the business stuff you know a certain day and and such and it's just like a good thing to be able to build that momentum in your life and I like, are there Amazon people you're jamming on fitness stuff with too? It's funny. Ever since like Miami seller conference, people are like just reaching out. They're like, wow, like that was a crazy message. Like I'm struggling with this too. I know someone today actually has DMing with them. They just hired a trainer and like going to the gym. Cause like just, it's inspiring. And I think I'm going to start talking more about the fitness, like on the actual page and kind of just, cause they go hand in hand you really. Should, yeah, oh, of course. Super. And, and you get just that kind of that. build that up. And now you know what to talk about. Now people might be inspired yeah. by that. That's another way you can, you know, meet, you know, find further connections and such and everything. It's like, you got no idea. Like I literally, like I had no idea like five years ago when we got started that only two years after that, I'd be doing seller amp shit, like have a software company yeah. essentially, right? That's but one crazy. thing leads to another, you know, you, 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 you know, you start pushing the snowball down the hill, eventually the snowball gets bigger it's and easier. takes up speed, it's et cetera, easy. right? You learn, you innovate, et cetera, right? So it's a really, really a uh, good thing too. And just, uh, we rarely get people on that have just been, you know, had this thing going for a while, really been good at it for a while. So what are the traits you see in people that end up sticking around over the long term, like Amazon sellers that make it essential, are able to like sustainably live off it, build wealth, et cetera? I think for you got to be one, you have to be focused and you got to know, like be after it. So I think one, you want to be focused and you want to be a long term thinker. Like starting the Amazon influencer program is like, so basically you upload these videos or whatever. Like there are some people who uploaded 10 videos or like I made like 20 cents or whatever. It's like, bro, I've uploaded like 700. 
and now the thing is like spinning for me like you got to be in it for the long term so you can't buy five asins and then like one tanks and you're like oh some get returned this isn't for me you really got to be looking long-term focused i would say like give it like at least six months preferably a year yeah. and try to keep as much money in it as possible uh two networking for sure being connected um is just i don't know like everyone always says oh your network is your net and i think a lot of Shit's people just kind of like though. pass look it at, over look like at yeah the Amazon right sellers. whatever yeah sorry to interrupt but look at the amazon yeah. seller someone talks to or lack thereof and i can so accurately predict their success yeah like if you look at the miami sellers conference too like being around these guys for like when you show up for five years or four however many they've done or whatever it's like now you're like in the group like you've been doing this you show up you're a good person. Like you contribute, you're helping like all, like two, 300 people that are in the room, like that gets recognized. And like, now you get help from anyone. So I think that is one, um, three social media, everyone that I know that is like really crushing. I mean, there's really big sellers that aren't on social media, but for the majority, if you really want to grow your business a lot easier, social media is definitely like the key, especially just like networking. And for me, I'm really not on Twitter that much. Like Instagram is my favorite. So just like pick one of them and just go all in on that and just build friendships. I mean, that is kind of like the heart of it all. And I think like, don't see people as like competitors. Like you have to remember, like I reached out to Miles and we were literally like 10 minutes away. Really? And in the book game, like it's kind of detrimental to have yeah. like another person that like, you're going to be friendly with because like you're going to there's four or five stores like that's all there is and like you have to like either beat them to it or whatever um but like to be like hey like maybe we could help each other out or hey maybe we could go source together and like split whatever we find because it's going to be faster with two people so kind of have that growth mindset and just be like hey how can i help this person um and go with that and then the last one, I would say, I think a lot of people that see a lot of success, which is hard to do, is I love the idea of having a full-time job and building this on the side or having another source of income yep. is letting the money sit in the business for as long as possible and compound Huge. it. That is probably one of the biggest things that I see um, that really separates the successful people versus the people who are struggling. You can't spend a thousand thousand and try to take a thousand out it just doesn't work that way and just kind of keep it in there try to compound it and if you do kind of those four things and smash them all together i feel like that's what a lot of the successful people like when you're like oh what's the turning point it was like oh keeping the money in the business or meeting this person or meeting that person um so i think those are kind of the keys that i've seen from being mm. in the space yeah Bring it all myself it. And such. And so if people want to find you on social media, side also experiment on all platforms. Yep. Cool. Side also experiment on all platforms. Boom. So y'all check in. got the podcast going now too. Got the nice setup there. As yeah, well. check you out the podcast. Side also experiment podcast, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple. Uh, we just passed. Yeah, we'll do our 20th episode uh next Friday. Boom. Heck yeah. All right. So check out the boy right there. Thanks everyone for listening. Really appreciate you coming on Thanks again. Thanks for having now, me. Okay?